Hello, everybody. Ephraim Schwartz calling you here from Eretz Yisrael. And I'm down in the Negev today, not far from the Be'er city of Be'er Sheva, which I just visited. Um, and it's beautiful. It's magnificent. There's nothing like the south of Eretz Yisrael, the Negev area, um, in the winter. All green, all beautiful. You see, we passed by Tzomet Kama, which is named after the wheat fields, the Kama of wheat, and green wheat lining the sides of the roads, shepherds with sheep. You feel like you're in the times of Avraham Avinu, looking around, seeing the shepherds, the sheep, the water that's still here from the winter, um, and the rains that we haven't had this past week. And um, it's just magnificent, it's breathtaking. Um, you know, I've been stuck way up in Carmel for way too long, and it's been a machai to come down here for my cousin's bar mitzvah, Azriel Bergman, mazel tov to you, and thank you for getting this out, and to hear to have Shmuel. Um, but a quick vart, a quick idea, a quick story on this week's Parsha, that really ties into the ex ex inspiration that I had this past week, or this past trip this today. Um, the Torah portion that we begin is actually the third book of the Torah, it's called Vayikra. Right, it's named Vayikra after the first word of the first pasuk of the parsha, um, which is Vayikra el Moshe, and he called to Moshe, Vayomer Hashem Elav, and Hashem said to him, May Olmoid, um, or Yidab Hashem Elav May Olmoid, and Hashem spoke to him from the Olmoid, um, and it's a strange pasuk. Um, because it starts off Vayikra, and he called. That's a strange way to start off a book, and he called. Who called? It doesn't say. Vayikra el Moshe, and he called to Moshe. Then it says, Vayom, Vayedaber Hashem Elav, and Hashem said to him. Again, and Hashem said, okay, to who? To Moshe, I guess. But then why don't you just put it together? Why don't you just say, Vayikra Hashem el Moshe, Vayomer Elav, or it, it, that would make more sense. You know, any English teacher would correct that. Um, in addition, it seems like a strange, arbitrary thing, and he called him. That's that's why you're naming the entire book of sacrifices, and Hashem called to Moshe. I mean, what does that have to do with the the essence of the title of your book, which is Vayikra? So the Nesiva Shalom of Slonim says an incredible idea. He says Vayikra el Moshe, and he called to Moshe, is Vayikra, and he called. It's not Hashem calling in the... Hashem getting up and you know, calling him, but by is that there's a constant call that goes out from Har Sinai every single day to every single Jew. Vayikra, and that's the call that Moshe heard. Right? The, the daily call from Hashem to connect to him. Vayidaber Hashem, and Hashem spoke, then Moshe heard that call. Vayomer Elav, and then Hashem said to everybody. Elav is again, arbitrary, anonymous. Hashem speaks to everybody with that call with that voice. How does he speak? Can we hear that voice? So he says, it's interesting, Vayikra has a small little olive in there, making it more of a Vayikar, and he appeared, more happenstance, or Mikra is a happening, an occurrence, something happens. Meaning, to a large degree, Hashem appears to mankind in everyday things. We can see Hashem in everything. We're meant to see and hear that voice of Hashem in everything that happens to us. I'll share with you an incredible story I saw. My dear friend, Rabbi Aryeh Gibber, formerly of the Norfolk area community, Kolo, um, wrote a book, um, just recently came out, on Maminim B'nai Maminim, together with Rabbi Simcha Klein of Detroit. <laughs> and I was flipping through the book and I just saw a great story from Rabbi Yisrael Salanter. Rabbi Yisrael Salanter, the leader of the Musser movement, came down to, um, uh, was going on a trip once and he stayed by this inn and as he's staying there, and he gets into discussion with the innkeeper, and the innkeeper starts talking to him about God, and he says, listen, I don't really buy into the whole God thing, because if there was Hashem, he would perform miracles, right? We don't see any miracles. I mean, they said, talk about biblical miracles and all those stories that happened. Yeah, how come we don't see them today? How come we don't have any miracles today? I'm not really sure, you know, that there is a God, and uh, if there was, then he would be performing miracles. We would, he, would, he would show himself to us more often. And uh, Rabbi Soslanter didn't say anything. He went to his room. Later the next day, he comes down to breakfast. And uh, all of a sudden, he sees this girl comes in, you know, a 17-year-old girl. And she meets the, uh, the father. And this is obviously the daughter of the innkeeper. And he gives her a hug. And uh, Rabbi Sol says, you know, um, says talking to the girl. 
And he says, what do you do? She goes, well, I'm actually training to be a world-class violinist. I've learned by, since the age of three, I've been playing the violin. I perform concerts all over the world. And uh, this is my future, you know, to, uh, that, that's who I am. And the Rosal Salante says, oh, really? You're, you're an incredible violinist? He goes, let me hear you play something. And she looked at him. I should play something? I, I don't just play arbitrarily. People pay thousands of dollars to come and... And she was very insulted. She walks away. And uh, about an hour later, the, the father comes back out and he tells her, Rizal like, you know, what did you say to my daughter? She's very insulted. Rizal said, listen, she told me she's a violinist. I asked her, I wanted to see her play something. He says, you don't understand. This is somebody that pays thousands of dollars. You know, in our modern day terms, you know, you, you bump into Mordecai Ben David in the, in the, uh, in the streets. Hey, oh, you're Mordecai Ben David. Sing me a song. Right? Or you see, you, you bump into the, you know, a uh, world-class pianist, right? Play me a nigga. You don't come over to somebody like that. This is somebody that, you know, you have to prepare yourself. You have to dress up. You go to, it's the ambience. It's an important hush of a thing. Right? It's not just, you know, he's not a side street corner that you throw him a nickel to. Because we saw something that goes, aha. And you think Hashem is? <laughs> you think Hashem is just a side? Oh, make me a miracle, God. Show me you're around. Prove yourself to me. He said, Hashem performs miracles every single day. Every single day, if you just look at creation, you can hear, you can experience it. He doesn't do anything extraordinary. Hashem performed his big concert by Kriyas Yamsa, by Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim, when we left Egypt. That was the big concert. We're coming closer. We read this before Pesach time because we're going to experience, we're going to get dressed up, we've been preparing, we've been cleaning, because that's going to be our incredible, where we're going to see that show of how Hashem controls all of nature. But we have something else after that, and it's called the Sefer Vayikra, that we have to hear that call that comes out. And you know what that's, that call is all about? It's about recognizing that every occurrence of our lives comes from Hashem. And that's what sacrifices are all about. Because what sac Karbonos is, is that if I do a sin, oh, I have to come close to Hashem. I had a baby, I have to bring a sacrifice, it comes from Hashem. I had something good to me, Thanksgiving offering to Hashem. Every action that I do, every mikra in my life, I have to connect to God. I have to connect to Hashem. I have to bring a sacrifice, a flower offering, this, my new fruits, bring it to Hashem. It's all about the mikra, hearing the call in the things. There is no better title for the book of Vayikra than Vayikra. <laughs> I guess that's why Hashem chose it. So, I want to wish everybody, as we're getting ready in this last week of Russia, to appreciate all of the Mikram. I mean, I have the pleasure of being here in Israel because this is the land where everything comes from Hashem. And we travel, we see the beauty of the land. This is all from God. This is his artwork over here. Mirza Hashem, all of you should be able to be here. This week, Mashiach should come. And we should have the carbon Pesach together in Yerushalayim. Or we'll bring that carbon. We'll get close to Hashem. And Meretz uh, we should have the Gula Shleima. I just want to remind you guys, I put out an incredible book on Pesach this week. I would have carried it with me, but I forgot. We're running late. And it's the most enjoyable book you'll ever read about Pesach. So if you'd like the book, please send me an email. I'll tell you how you can get it. It's Rabbi Schwartz at yahoo.com, R-A-B-B-I-S-E-H-W-R-T-Z at yahoo.com. Have a great Shabbos. Shabbat Shalom.